as you can see from the thumbnail, we're going to get into some politics. Now, before all the accusations start coming in, no, I am not a Republican and no, I'm not a Democrat. Honestly, I'm an independent thinker, okay? I don't get involved with cults. I like to keep my options open. Even if you hear me going hard on one side, that doesn't mean I'm a Republican, okay? That doesn't mean I'm a Democrat. That just means I got criticisms, okay? I be critiquing folks. In my perfect world, a lot of people would vote third party and then we would dismantle this two-party bullshit system that we currently have. Because right now, they give us options with no real choice. Today, we're gonna talk about that Kamala interview that she had on Fox News. If you know me in my personal life, you already know I do not like Kamala, okay? As a mother, I don't like her. As a black woman, I don't like her. As an American, I don't like her. As a mother, I do not like her because of what she did to Sheree Peoples. Single mother trying her best to raise her child who has a chronic illness, being dragged into court over truancy when she clearly has her daughter in the hospital because of her sickle cell, and you're still dragging her through the mud, painting her out to be like a gang member and a terrible mom, all because you want money from the schools. I have a huge issue with that. And then the fact that you laugh about it, girl, bye. So I decided I was gonna start prosecuting parents for truancy. This was a little controversial in San Francisco. <laughs> but if you don't go to school, Kamala's gonna put you and me in jail. I cannot rock with that level of malice and disgusting behavior towards a mother trying to do her best with a chronically ill child. And that child had a stroke during all those legal battles. This woman lost her home, lost her job, pretty much lost everything because of Kamala and her unconstitutional truancy program. As a black woman, I don't like her because she cosplaying as us. Where do people get the line that Jamaica means black? There are Asian Jamaicans, okay? There are white Jamaicans. There are Indian Jamaicans and nowhere in her history does it show her actually having a black relative. And so the idea that your Indian mother raised a black woman, girl, bye. So the cosplaying as black is not fun for me as an actual black woman. All these negative stereotypes, all of your total incompetence, you're trying to have that fall back on black women because that's what you're repping so hard with your identity politics. No, ma'am. What is there to laugh about? I'm sorry. Uh, the economy's in shit. We're in involved in two wars that have nothing to really do with us. A lot of people are struggling. We had these hurricanes come through and devastate a large population of the country. We're bringing in joy. Girl, bye. There's no joy right now until these things get fixed. As an American, I don't like you because you're not really American. Yeah, you were born here, but both your parents are immigrants. You grew up in Canada. You don't even have biological children that are here. So you have no real investment in where America goes. Your allegiances are elsewhere. So as an American, I don't trust you, okay? You are basically a foreign invader born on soil. That's just how I look at it. You can feel differently and that's perfectly fine. But me, when it comes to the president of the United States, I want you to be deep deeply rooted in America, okay? I need you to have roots here. I need you to plant seeds here. I need to know that you actually give a damn about Americans. Let's get into this interview because it was a hot mess. Just a side note, that dude's face is pulled way too tight. I'm gonna need whoever his doctor is to loosen up a few of them stitches back there just so his face can breathe. I think his name was Brett Bear, Be Brett Bear? I don't really know. I don't watch the news. I don't trust them folks. I'm just keeping a buck. I don't trust them to tell me what the truth is, you know? A lot of the news sites, they're all biased every single one of them. They're either biased towards the right or they're biased towards the left. There's never really a honest discussion about these different topics. So I don't trust Nan one of them, but I digress. That kept taking me out the interview. I'm not even gonna lie. I kept looking at his face like, dang, can this dude breathe? Let's get into the interview. How many illegal immigrants would you estimate your administration has released into the country over the last three and a half years? Well, I'm glad you raised the issue of immigration because I agree with you. It is a, it is a uh, topic of discussion that people want to rightly have. And you know what I'm going to talk about. Yeah, but right do you, now, just a number. Is, do you but, think it's but, 1 million, 3 million? Brett, let's just get to the point. How you gonna say, oh, let's get to the point when you're literally dragging it? He asked you a question and you went on this whole tirade that has nothing to do with actually answering the question. But then when he tries to redirect, oh, no, no, let's get to the point. I'm gonna need you to get to the point. I asked you the question. The reason why I'm interrupting you is because you're going every which where, but to answer my question, get to the point. Yes, please do. Because you, you missing the point. You going everywhere but the targets. Okay, the point is, 
that we have a broken immigration system that needs to be repaired. So your and Homeland Security Secretary said that 85% well, no, of apprehensions... I'm not apprehensions, finished. I'm not finished. We have, a, we have it's an immigration system... It's a rough estimate of 6 million people have been released be, but, into the country. And let me just finish, and I'll get to the question, I promise you. I was beginning to answer. All of this is just a tactic to waste time. When somebody really don't want to be there, they're going to they gonna drag it, okay? They're going to show up late, which she did. They're going to talk real slow and include a lot of pauses that don't make sense so that they don't have to answer all of your questions. And that is how she talked the whole interview. Get off script and just talk to me like a person. Looking back, do you regret the decision to terminate Remain in Mexico at the beginning of your administration? At the beginning of our administration, within practically hours, of taking the oath, the first bill that we offered Congress before we worked on infrastructure, before the Inflation Reduction Act, before the Chips and Science Act, before any, before the Bipartisan Safer Communities Act. Before we ate dinner, before we brushed our teeth, before we tucked Biden into bed, before, before. Girl, get to the point. He didn't ask you what you did before. He's asking you about the policy. Stop saying all this before we did this, before we did. We don't need that. This is not a Harry Potter novel, okay? This is an interview. Answer the question before we forget what the question was. I finish, may I finish responding, please? But, here, but, this, but you have to let me finish, You please. had the White House and the House and the Senate, I'm and they the didn't bring up that bill. I'm in the middle of responding to the point you're raising, okay. and I'd like to finish. Yes, ma'am. We recognized from day one that to the point of this being your first question, it is a priority to address our asylum system and pour, put more resources, getting more judges, what we needed to do to tighten up penalties and increase penalties for illegal crossings. You can't tell me that you're tightening up penalties when you're doing a catch and release program. You cannot tell me that you're tightening up penalties when you're giving blanket amnesty to people that have not been vetted. Vetted, why did I say it like that? To people that haven't been vetted. You cannot say these things because they literally contradict. So if you're telling me that you're tightening up penalties, but the main idea of your policy is to let these people out in the streets and give them access to resources, the name of your policy doesn't fit what the actual policy does. You can't catch and release folks and say you're tightening up the penalties. That's a slap on the wrist. That's a, hey, by the way, we caught you. Have a good day, sir. Like, what penalty is that? That border bill would have put 1,500 more border agents at the border, which is why I believe the Border Patrol agents supported the bill. And six Donald Democrats, Trump, but let me just finish. Six and Democrats Donald voted Trump against that bill. learned about that bill and told them to kill it because he preferred to run on a problem instead of fixing a problem. This whole idea of preferring to run on a problem, every single politician runs on problems. No politician here on this green earth is going to run on, hey, the world's great and I'm here to just keep it great. No, every single politician is gonna run on a problem. And also you cannot go around boasting about how all the Republicans turned on Trump and the Republicans don't even like him, but then say he has pool to get your bills thrown in the trash. Like girl, it can't be both ways. Either everybody in the political realm is like F this guy or people still rock with your boy. So make it make sense. And what they want are solutions and they want a president of the United States who's not playing political games with the issue. I hear you. But actually is focused on fixing Six it. You know, I really find it funny when the pot calls the kettle black playing political games. You literally were just doing that with DeSantis. He's over here trying to handle the hurricane and you're like, well, he didn't pick up my phone call. He's making it political. He didn't pick up my phone call. The whole time you have nothing to do with the hurricanes. You are literally not someone he needs to talk to when it comes to the hurricanes. Biden funny as hell. Uh, you could tell they done pissed him off. He went out there and said, DeSantis is doing a great job. Well, you know, it's one thing to hear me say it. Let's cue the Joe Biden so he can tell you himself. Governor of Florida has been cooperative. He said he's gotten all that he needs. I talked to him again yesterday. And I, and I said, whatever, I said, no, you're doing a great job. It's being all being done well. We thank you for it. And I literally gave my personal phone number to call. 
but you want to get on here and talk about political games. You're literally playing political games with people's lives, making it about you. Calling you about a hurricane? What does that have to do with you? You're making it about yourself because you think it's going to help you in the polls with people who don't like DeSantis. During this time, we need to be focused on the victims of the hurricane. We need to be focused on protecting and finding and helping and aiding our fellow Americans during this difficult situation. That's what we need to be doing, not worrying about if he picked up the phone and called you or answered your bum ass calls. And if you were so concerned about hurricanes, where have you been your whole three and a half years of being the vice president? Where were you? Were you calling DeSantis then or just now because you're playing a political game? And I'm not even a DeSantis fan, okay? <laughs> it's crazy out here. You know, that's the whole thing with the Kamala campaign is that they got me out here defending people that I don't even like because they're just telling so many lies and it's just desperate at this point and it's disgusting. Madam Vice President, it was a policy decision in the early part of your administration. I will let one of the mothers talk about it. Take a listen. Because of the Biden-Harris administration open border policies catch and release, they were enrolled in the alternatives to detention program. This meant that they were released into the United States. It was not even a full three weeks later that they would take my daughter Jocelyn Nungare's life. I believe the Biden-Harris administration open border policies are responsible for the death of my daughter. That's the early days. So do you owe them an apology is what I I'm saying. I will tell you that I am so sorry for her loss. But let's talk about what is happening right now with an individual who does not want to participate in solutions. You know, after hearing that mother speak about what happened to her daughter, if you look at Kamala's face, she has such disdain in her face. Like she's mad, like how dare you complain? You know, normal people, when they hear someone talking about a loved one, especially their child being harmed, you would see some type of remorse or sadness in their face. And she's just looking like, like, how dare you play me that clip? And see, all that was just deflection. Oh, let's talk about what's happening right now. No, you need to answer the question. Your policy led to her daughter being killed. That was because of your policy. You need to take responsibility for that and address it rather than trying to talk about well, what's happening now as if their pain doesn't matter, as if their pain isn't happening right now. Their pain is going to be forever having that loss, especially for the mother, right? You never get over that. And I don't ever want to experience that and I don't wish that on anybody. The fact that you're just like, well, let's move on. It's like that get over it type of attitude. Most humans would want to address why that happened to her daughter. And if it was your policy and you have some kind of remorse for that situation, you would address it instead of trying to deflect from it. There's other things to talk about, but you frequently talk to the Border Patrol Union for support of that bipartisan bill, and they did. They supported it. But they also just endorsed Donald Trump and said, you've been, quote, a failure with border security. Why do you think they said that? Let me just quickly put a button. Okay. Do you have any plans to visit the border? I, I'm here in Guatemala today I, at some point. You know, I, we are going to the border. We've been to the border. So you, this whole this whole this whole thing about the border, we've been to the border. We've been to the border. You haven't been to the border. I, and I haven't been to Europe. And I mean, I don't I don't understand the point that you're making. There's a lot of people that look back at what you said in 2019 when you first ran for president. Uh, and there have been changes and you've talked about some of them. When it comes to immigration, you supported allowing immigrants in the country illegally to apply for driver's license, to qualify for free tuition at universities, to be enrolled in free health care. Do you su still support those things? Listen, that was five years ago, and I'm very clear that I will follow the law. I have made that statement over and over again, and as Vice President of the United States, that's exactly what I've done, not to mention before. I will follow the law. What kind of answer is that? <laughs> that is a complete non-answer. You're not really telling us how you feel about it. If you're in a policy-making position, you're in a position where you can affect the law, I need to know how you feel about that law, not whether or not you're going to follow the law. How are you going to change the law? Do you agree with the law? Okay. All all these liberal people, I need you to think about this critically. Would you accept that answer if the topic was slavery? Because it was legal. If she got up there and said, I will follow the law when you know the law is bull, would you still be rallying behind it? No, that is a complete non-answer and she shouldn't be allowed to get away with that. If that's the case, you chose a running mate, Tim Walz, who, governor of Minnesota, who signed those very things into state law. So do you support that? We are very clear, and I am very clear, as is Tim Walls, that we must support and enforce federal law, 
And that is exactly what we will do. Again, another non-answer. So decriminalizing border crossings, like you said in 2019. I, I do not believe in decriminalizing border crossings, and I've not done that as vice president, and I will not do that as president. Let me just be very clear. I am in favor of saying that we're not going to treat people who are undocumented across the border as criminals. That's correct. Gotcha, bitch! Kamala supports taxpayer-funded sex changes for prisoners. Surgery. Um, for prisoners. Uh, for prisoners. Every transgender inmate in the prison system would have access. So... Are you still in support of using taxpayer dollars to help prison inmates or detained illegal aliens to transition to another gender? I will follow the law. I will follow the law. Does Polly want a cracker? Okay, because you keep parroting the same phrase over and over again. Do you support it or not? Period. That's all you, yes or no. A scantron, you only got two bubbles to fill in. Not this, I will follow the law bull. And I think frankly that ad from the Trump campaign is a little bit of like throwing you know, stones when you're living in a glass house. The Trump aides say that he never advocated for that prison policy and no gender transition well, surgeries happened during his Well, you know what, you gotta take responsible his, for what happened presidency. in your administration. Take responsible for, hmm, oh, okay. If that's so, then I'm gonna need you to take responsible for all these other things. Like, you know, sleeping with a married man, locking up mothers who are just trying to take care of their sick children, keeping prisoners past their release date because you wanted free labor. I'm gonna need you to take responsible for all of that. He spent $20 million on those ads, trying to create a sense of fear in the voters because he actually has no plan in this election that is about focusing on the needs of the American people. The audacity, okay, the audacity to say that this man has no plan when your website just got policies, right? I kept checking her website every day to see when is she gonna put up a list of policies that we can read. And I was like, this thing just asking for money. Donate your time and your money. Donate your time and your money. Donate your time and your money. No policy in sight until maybe what, two weeks ago? Girl, you cannot talk about somebody else not having a plan when you just got a plan up there. And a lot of the policies that you were toting around in your little speeches were things you got from Donald Trump, not taxing tips even though you were the one that sent IRS workers after servers for their tips. And that's just one policy that she stole from Trump. So to, to say this man has no plan is, is, it's laughable coming from her when you just got policies on your website a week ago. At $20 million on that ad, on an issue that, as it relates to the biggest issues that affect the American people, it's really quite remote. So wasting resources that Americans can use is remote. We shouldn't care about that. We shouldn't care about our tax dollars going towards sex changes for prisoners and illegal immigrants. While we out here struggling, can't eat. A lot of homeless people, a lot of homeless veterans who done paid their dues into this country. They can't survive, but us worrying about where our tax dollars is going is remote. It's, not, it's a non-issue. We shouldn't be worried about it. Girl, bye. They on say plans for the American we'll people, I'm offering a plan to deal with affordable housing. I'm offering a plan to deal with what we need to do to strengthen small businesses, which are the backbone of America's economy. Her and Biden have no business putting small businesses in a freaking mouth. If y'all don't recall, during the pandemic, they literally shut down mom and pops. They shut down mom and pop locations and then allowed Walmart, Target, McDonald's, all the big name brands to stay open while mom and pop shops had to continue paying rent for buildings that they couldn't even use because they weren't being allowed to operate during the pandemic. So you cannot tell me that you care about small businesses when a lot of small businesses failed because of your policy, because of your mandated vaccine, because of your, you know, arbitrary way of deciding who was an essential worker and who wasn't. So do not talk to me about small businesses when you're the reason you and Biden and then a lot of these different governors, it's not just y'all, a a lot of people need to hold this L are the reason why a lot of small businesses failed. You're not Joe Biden, you're not Donald Trump, but, but nothing comes to mind that you would do differently? Let me be very clear. My presidency will not be a continuation of Joe Biden's presidency. And like every new president that comes in to office, I will bring my life experiences, my professional experiences, and fresh and new ideas. I represent a new generation of leadership. You wanna bring your life experiences to the White House? Girl, bye. Growing up in Canada, you wanna bring that here? Being uh, Willie Brown's Madam of the Nights, you wanna bring that to the White House? 
locking up black mothers because they have chronically ill children? You wanna bring that to the White House? What life experiences are you trying to bring to the White House? Because from what I can see, your experiences, I don't want them anywhere near the White House, let alone my house. This whole idea of I'm gonna bring something new to government. Girl, bye, you've been in office. Of the two of you, Trump is the only one who has very, very small amount of time dealing with politics. He was only in office for four years. He was never a senator. He was never a governor. He was never a house of representative. Like he has very limited government experience. So you can't say that you're the one that's new, new to the scene. You're not, okay? You're not, you're the same old, same old. Your status quo, period, point blank. Your campaign slogan is a new way forward and it's time to turn the page. You've been vice president for three and a half years. So what are you turning the page from? Well, first of all, turning the page from the last decade in which we have been burdened with the kind of rhetoric coming from Donald Trump that has been designed and implemented to divide our country. You know, I find this whole rhetoric conversation so interesting because they literally get on here and call him Hitler when he has not done mass genocide the way Hitler did. They literally get up there and call him Hitler, but they wanna talk about somebody else's rhetoric? Glass houses and rocks. Y'all cannot call this man everything but a child of God and then be mad at his rhetoric. Both sides use disgusting rhetoric. Rhetoric and an approach to leadership that suggests that the strength of a leader is based on who you beat down instead of what we all know. The strength of leadership is based on who you lift up. Oh, like how you lifted up Sheree Peoples and her sick daughter out of their home and out of her job because of a bull's truancy case? Is that the type of lifting you're talking about? Lifting us up out of our home so that you can let illegals move in? Is that the type of lifting we're talking about? They say the country is on the wrong track. If it's on the wrong track, that track follows three and a half years of you being vice president and President Biden being president. That is what they're saying, 79% of them. Why are they saying that? If you're turning the page, you've been in office for three and a half years. And Donald Trump has been running for office. Stop playing with me. Running for office is not the same as holding office. Well, he was running for office for you. What they gotta do with anything? You've been in office. Girl, stop deflecting. Trump cannot be your, your only answer for everything. Well, Trump bad, Trump bad. How is him running for office have anything to do with you being in office and actually having power that you can wield, right? Like you're the deciding vote on a lot of things. Like stop, hold yourself responsible. But you've been the person holding the office. Come on, Madam you Vice and I President. both know what I'm talking about. You and I both know what I'm talking about. I actually don't, about. what are you talking about? What I'm talking about is that over the last decade, but people you're the have become, power. but listen. Trump bad, Trump bad. If that's the case, why is half the country supporting him? Why is he beating you in a lot of swing states? Why, if he's as bad as you say, that half of this country is now supporting this person who could be the 47th president of the United States. Why is that happening? This is an election for president of the United States. It's not supposed to be easy. It's not supposed to be easy. Girl, what does that have to do with anything? He asked you why people don't rock with you. What does that have to do with, it's not supposed to be easy. He literally just asked you, why do people prefer orange man bad over you? He didn't ask you if it was hard or difficult or anything like that. He asked you why people don't like your ass. All right, answer that question. I know, but it's not it's supposed to be, it, 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 it is not, Supposed to be a so cakewalk for So are they misguided? The fifty percent? Are they stupid? What, oh what God! Is it? I would never say that about the American people. What else do we know about this population, eighteen through twenty-four? They are stupid. And in fact, if you listen to Donald Trump, if you watch any of his rallies, he's the one who tends to demean and belittle and diminish the American people. He's the one who talks about an enemy within, within, an enemy within, talking about the American people suggesting he would turn the American military on the American people. You know, I find it very comical, this whole idea that Trump is gonna wanna turn the military on the American people. He literally did not do that when he was in presidency. And not only that, if I remember correctly, it was Good Samaritans being threatened with prison time, being threatened during these hurricanes that happened under your administration. It was Good Samaritans under 
you and Biden who were being threatened when they were just trying to go out and help people in North Carolina. So you can't say, oh, he's gonna do this when y'all are literally doing that. You're literally turning, you know, law enforcement, military, all that against us when we just wanna help our fellow citizens. We asked that the question to the former president today. Harris Faulkner had a, a town hall and this is how he responded. I heard about that. They, they were saying I was, like, threatening. I'm not threatening anybody. They're the ones doing the threatening. They do phony investigations. I've been investigated more than Alphonse Capone. He was the greatest oh gangster. No, it's right. true. We've no, but question. think of it. It's called weaponization of government. It's a terrible thing. If y'all don't sit down with this dang blasted legal case against Trump for having documents at La Lamar, or whatever, whatever the place is called, wasn't Biden caught doing the same exact thing and then y'all did not charge him? So if you want to talk about using your political power to attack your political opponents, this is a perfect example of that. If this was such an issue, why wasn't Biden charged with the exact same charges that y'all put on Trump? If Biden was doing the exact same thing, why are you charging Trump for it, but not Biden? Is it you're attacking your political opponents? You're the one weaponizing the judicial system, okay? That's you. You're projecting. He has repeated it many times, and you and I both know that. And you and I both know that he has talked about turning the American military on the American people. He has talked about going after people who are engaged in peaceful protest. He has talked about locking people up because they disagree with him. This is a democracy. This is a democracy, says the woman that got no votes, says the woman that was selected, not elected. You are not the incumbent president. Biden is still in office right now. You have not been inaugurated into that position. So you don't get to just come into the primary big dog. And last time I checked, you were one of the first people to leave in 2020. So Americans did not like you then. We didn't vote for you now. So uh, you want to talk about democracy. Why wasn't there a primary if Biden wasn't going to run? Why did you guys steal that choice from the Democrats? But you want to talk about democracy? And in, in a democracy, the president of the United States in the United States of America should be willing to be able to handle criticism without saying he'd lock people up for doing it. This part of the conversation is actually very irritating to me because it's Democrats that I hear saying, it's liberals that I hear saying that they want to lock people up and find people for disinformation and misinformation. Look, I don't know when y'all started trusting the government this hard, but I don't trust Nan one of them muff to tell me what the truth is. Who gets to decide what's real information, what's true and what's false? As if the government has not lied to us before. Y'all really want to be that trusting to let somebody tell you this is the absolute truth as if they don't have biases agendas they all do I wouldn't trust the Republican to tell me what the truth is and I sure as hell wouldn't trust the Democrat to tell me what the truth is this whole conversation about disinformation and locking people up because they disagree with what you say that's mostly coming from the Democrat side let's keep it a buck you and told many interviewers that Joe Biden was on his game that ran around circles on his staff when did you first notice that President Biden's mental faculty Faculties appeared diminished. Joe Biden, I have watched in from the Oval Office to the Situation Room, and he has the judgment and the experiment and experience to do exactly what he has done in making very important decisions on behalf of the American people. You met with him at least once a week for three and a half years. You didn't have any concerns? I think the American people have a concern about Donald Trump. It's always a deflection. It's like if she can't answer the question, she reverts to orange man bad. Orange man bad. Did you know orange man bad? Did you know orange man bad? Critics just say that you either relaxed or failed to, to enforce sanctions on Iran, allowing all of this money to flow let, into Iran, like let, billions let, let's in Let's go back to Donald profits. Trump, who, on, who, pulled out of, who pulled out of a deal. Why did you allow Iran to make so much money? Orange man bad. When did you notice Biden's cognitive decline? Orange man bad. Why did you have an affair with a married Willie Brown? Orange man bad. That is your response to literally everything. Can you actually answer the questions? Can you give us some information outside of orange man bad? I hope you got to say what you wanted to say about Donald Trump 
There are a lot of things. There's that, more to say. I have there, much there more to say. There are a lot actually. of things that people want to learn about you. Look, this boogeyman politics is so annoying. I'm over it. My final thoughts on the interview: It was a sh show. It was a train wreck. She made herself look very incompetent the entire time, deflecting, giving non-answers, awkward ass pauses. Everything about the interview was so off-putting. And I understand why a lot of people don't like Trump. I understand it completely. But there are other options outside of Trump and Kamala. Like, let's be serious. Jill Stein been in these streets. <laughs> Do I really want that cackling heifer? The leader of our country? Absolutely not. Outside of that, like I said, loosen up that man face. He is wound way too tight. Deuces.